Hello everybody, this is The Horror Sickness and I'm back again with yet another video. Um, yes, I have shaved my head. No, that is not why we are here. We are here to take a look at my collection. Um, for the first time I'm going to do a collection overview. Now, I didn't even do this when I was Frightmare 100. I used to pick out a few things and show a few things off, but never really went through my entire collection. So we're going to be doing an A to Z. Now, this is going to take quite a while. Um, I don't have the biggest collection, but I'd like to talk a little bit about each piece. Um, each DVD, each film, um, each special edition, each poster, each figure, everything we're going to be taking a look at. So it's going to be in many parts. Um, I don't know at this point how many parts it's going to be, but I'm going to try and keep each one quite short. We're going to try and keep it to around five to ten minutes for each part and just show a few pieces uh, for each part. It's been obviously an ongoing thing. So that's enough rambling. I usually just stand here and ramble for ages, but we're going to get straight into it. So this is part one of my horror collection overview thank you very much let's take a look okay guys so let's head straight into part one of my collection overview um, as I say no rambling I'm just going to get straight into it so first up we've got 8mm um, from the late 90s 98, 99 I believe uh, Nicolas Cage uh, detective who is asked to find out the authenticity of a, a snuff tape and it's pretty good not a bad film despite Nicolas Cage who I cannot stand uh, but Joaquin Phoenix is in this one, I'm a big fan of his, so that makes up for him being in it. Um, next up we have Nine Temples, uh, this is a couple of years old now. Uh, it's also known as Secret Sunday, um, if you want to come across this one. It's a Thai horror, guy visits uh, nine temples in seven days uh, with his girlfriend, this lady, and a monk, um, or a trainee monk. Basically just to correct his bad karma, he's seeing things and he's having bad luck and his mother says that he needs to go and visit these temples in order to sort that out, so he does. And ghostly occurrences. Um, next up we have 13 Game of Death. Uh, this is quite a few years old now, I think it's like 2005-ish. Uh, it's excellent, it's another Thai movie and it's about a guy who is, is just having the worst time, he's in plenty of debt, um, he's just lost his job and he gets a phone call basically offer, offering him the chance to win I think it's like a hundred million uh, yep yeah, it is a hundred million um, and all he has to do is complete 13 challenges or games and he will win uh, the first challenge is to kill a fly and then eat it and it gets pretty crazy after that obviously I'm not going to tell you what they are but the ending to this one is absolutely fantastic as well it's got a really cool twist ending uh, loved it definitely recommended check out 13 game of death Next up, one you all know, 28 Days Later, it's a great film, um, I say that the first half is, um, I lived in London for a while and those scenes at the beginning um, are just epic, um, it just feels like it's a little disjointed as if somebody filmed the first half of the film and then obviously when the uh, army guys and stuff get involved it just seems like a completely different film, it's got a different feel to it and it doesn't quite have the impact to the first half of the film but Really good film, definitely worth a watch. Um, if you haven't seen it, which is massively unlikely, then check that one out. Uh, next up we have the follow-up, which is 28 weeks later. Um, I think this was about five years after the original came out. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, Robert Carlyle, who's the main character in this one, is very good. Um, it's obviously not as good as the first one, but it's still a decent watch. And can I just point out, it's not a zombie film. Um, I don't know where these arguments come from. They're not zombies, they're infected people. Uh, next up is 30 Days of Night. Um, this, I remember, is from 2007 because I was living in Australia at the time. Um, and I went to see this at the cinema. I really like this one. Uh, this is a two-disc special edition with the comic book and everything. And... You can pick it up for quite cheap now, a couple of couple of pounds I think on Amazon, uh, which is really really cool. Um, vampire flick, you mostly gonna know it now. Uh, really well made. I really enjoy the premise, uh, the concept that the vampires would go to a town uh, that has kind of three months of constant darkness seems like something that would have been done before. Um, but I, as far as I'm aware, it hasn't. So it's a really cool premise, really cool idea, um, but really effective. Really enjoyed this one. Big favorite of mine. It's 30 days a night. Um, I'll tell you what, actually, let's take a closer look at that one before we... Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the 30 days of night that I have. This is the 2 disc special edition, as I said. <coughs> comes in this nice slipcase. Uh, on the discs, uh, this one, obviously, the film and commentary with Josh Hartnett, Melissa George, and the producer, Rob Taper. Um, disc 2 has eight making of documentaries, pre-production, The Vampire, Building Barrow, The Cast, The Look... Uh, blood guts and the nasty shit, nice shoots and stunts, so plenty of stuff 
in the extras to be taken a look at. Nice little slip cover. <clears throat> the thing itself, two discs. And the back is the same as the back of the uh, cover. And just comes with this little pamphlet thing showing some other films and bits and bats. The main thing you do get with it is this comic book. Um, I have not read it. I do plan on reading it one day. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just a cool little thing. And as I say, you can pick it up for really, really cheap on Amazon. So that is 30 Days of Night. And let's get back to the collection. Yeah, so that was 30 Days of Night. Um, next up we have 1408. Um, this was from the same year because I actually went to watch this as well while I was in Australia. Um, I didn't like it at first. The first time I went to see this, I didn't like it at the cinema. Um, but then I thought, i come across it really cheap. Um, and this is the director's cut edition. I thought I'd give it another watch. And I'm glad I did. Um, the trailer, I will say the trailer, I don't know if people will remember this, but the trailer just... It was one of them that kind of showed things that never really happened. Um, that it was going to be full of scares and stuff, like the scene with his daughter. Um, but that was never in the film. And I think that's what disappointed me the first time round. Actually, re-watching it, there's some... It's quite comedic in parts, but there's some really good atmosphere to it and everything else. So I really did enjoy it. Um, so definitely check that one out. Next up, we have 1942. Um, this is from a director called Kelvin Tong. Um, he's got a few movies to his name, but he's not well known um, from Malaysia. <clears throat> and this film, 1942, it's, it's set in Malaysia and it follows a cameraman who is uh, trying to film the Japanese army. Um, they're making their way across the country. It's based on a true story at that time, um, trying to make their way to Kuala Lumpur. And a bomb goes off. Um, and this cameraman ends up stranded in the jungle. Uh, he bumps into the Japanese army, um, they're having problems as well, their maps are wrong, their equipment's not working and to top it all off the ghost of a girl is following them through the jungle. It's, it's pretty creepy, not the best film but um, if you find it it's worth a watch but I haven't come across it anywhere, I picked it up while I was in Malaysia um, so I'm not sure if it has a release anywhere else really. Uh, next up is this one, I want to give a quick shout out as well to Tattoo Doorman um, for turning me on to this one. Um, absolutely brilliant, absolutely loved it, uh, great little film, looks and feels like a kind of live action anime type thing, uh, it's bloody and gory and crazy and the other thing I want to mention real quick about this one, Necrostorm um, who distributed this have another film coming out soon called Tear to City, uh, so definitely go and check out their website, I'll put the link to it below, uh, they're also working on a game which looks a bit bizarre but it's called Death Cargo and there's a bunch of clips um, on YouTube, I'll put the link to a few of them below as well um, which shows kind of the, the idea of the deaths and the kills they're going to have in the game but uh, Adam Chaplin, um, I think this is still available as well on uh, Amazon UK for £5 I got it off HMV here in the UK for £5 but it has gone up in price um, but I'm pretty sure as I speak it's still £5, I'm sorry if it's not but I'll put the link to that below as well um, and again, thank you Tato Darman for pointing me in the direction of this one. I'll put a link to his um, review of this um, in the description below as well. Um, so I'm not going to ramble on about it too much. But yeah, definitely check it out. Absolutely fantastic film. Uh, next up we have Alone in the Dark. Um, I had this one given. Um, I've not got around to watching it yet. I've actually heard it's completely terrible. But I will watch it, um, I'll have to check it out one day, but you know, maybe it's so bad it's good, I don't know. Um, talking about bad films, this is one I particularly don't like. This is an American Haunting, um, it was like mid-2003, four, five, maybe. Um, just really didn't like it, it felt like kind of a Hallmark movie to me. The, <clears throat> the look of it, the feel of it, the atmosphere of it just really didn't work, really didn't enjoy it. I was disappointed with Donald, uh, Donald Sutherland as well in it. Um, it's got a really good cast and it's based on a true story. Um, just didn't do it for me at all. Not fantastic one bit. I know I've only got through a little bit, but I'm going to leave it there. As I say, I'm going to keep these short and sweet. So we've one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A uh, bit of a random number to stop on, but we're going to be taking a look in the next part, starting off with American Psycho. So that's it folks, thank you very much for watching, this has been part one of my collection overview, this has been the Horror Sickness, take it easy everybody.